everyone, my name's Ted and I'd like to welcome you to the series on upgrading my 2009 Harley Davidson Ultra Classic sponsored by Dynojet. I've owned this motorcycle for about nine years and put most of the miles on it, but one thing that it's always been lacking for me is horsepower. Um, the stock power on these is fairly anemic and while it does get the, get the bike up and going and keeps it at highway speeds, it, it definitely is nothing to write home about. Um, there's a lot of great products out there today that can help to increase that. And in talking with my friends at Dynojet, we've put together a package that I think is really gonna wake this bike up um, of an SNS 110 inch big bore kit, SNS teardrop filter, and SNS Eldorado uh, 50 state legal uh, full exhaust. I'm really excited about this. A little bit about me. I'm an engineer by training and uh, also a pilot as well. I fly a twin turbo prop all around the country doing animal rescue uh, on the weekends as my uh, philanthropy, you could say. Um, but I've always been into motorcycles. I've also always been into wrenching. In college, I was a, a Jaguar mechanic. Uh, you can probably see a little bit of the tire of my other project over here, which is a Shelby Cobra replica uh, that I'm also building. So. I've done a lot of wrenching, but I've actually not done very much wrenching on motorcycles. And that's part of why I'm really excited about doing this project and also being able to partner with Dynojet on it. Because even though I've turned wrenches on a bunch of different things, built engines, uh, things like that, I really haven't done a whole lot with motorcycles. And while I can figure out a lot of these things myself if I spend enough time doing it, uh, the folks at Dynojet really know what they're doing and were able to help me get a package figured out just off the bat without needing to do a whole ton of research because they've done the research, they have the experience, they know what they're doing. So I'm really excited about this. I think this is going to really transform the motorcycle and I hope that you enjoy the series on it. Um, what we're going to do is there's this intro and I've already taken the, the motorcycle to a dyno sh shop uh, to get an initial baseline run done. Uh, this had a stage one kind of upgrades on it with a bolt-on air filter upgrade, uh, some bolt-on exhaust upgrades, and a little bit of a canned uh, tuning map on it. That brought the horsepower from the stock 65 or so up to about 75 as measure on, measured on the dyno, uh, which is respectable, but I'm hoping that this is going to get closer to 110 horsepower at the wheel by the time all is said and done. So we'll see what happens. After this, we're gonna do some unboxing videos of the parts, show you what you get in the package. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the physical upgrades on the motorcycle over the next few weeks. Uh, I'm gonna make sure to include any kind of special tools or any tips that uh, I find useful along the way. So that if, whether you're somebody that's just looking to do this and you have a lot of wrenching experience, or maybe you've never done any kind of wrenching on a vehicle before, and you just wanna see whether or not this is something you think you could handle. Uh, so I hope that you find all of this interesting and informative. I'm really excited and looking forward to it. And I'd like to thank the folks at Dynojet for uh, wanting to help out and sponsor this build. So with that, uh, here's some video from the Dyno Run. All right, Joe, you got the uh, heat shields off. Uh, tell me what you got. Uh, what we've done is we've went through and drilled a couple holes in the front rear header pipe. Uh, I usually like to keep this within four to six inches of the head. Uh, the reason for that is to give us a lot better sample reading of the air fuel. Trying to use the copper tubing up the tailpipes, a lot of times you run into an issue with the tailpipe or the uh, the tubing wanting to bend and not getting a proper signal. So this gives us the best possible signal. Um, so what I do is drill the holes, put what's uh, called a rib nut into there, and then I've got uh, the sampling tubes that screw into that to go back to my wideband sensors to give me the proper signal. Awesome. Let's get it on the dyno. Absolutely. This build is going to have a couple of different facets to it. We've got this series of videos on the Dynojet YouTube page. Uh, th these are going to go with some blog entries that are going to have some more details that you can read on uh, the Dynojet website. And then I'm also going to put some videos on my YouTube channel that might be a little bit longer than what you see on the Dynojet uh, YouTube page. So 
Make sure that you go check out my YouTube channel. It's just Ted Dupuy. We'll have a link in the description below. Uh, and then you can and make sure to like and subscribe to these videos so that you can get updates uh, when we post new ones. Uh, over the next few weeks, we should take this bike from its current uh, stance of 75 horsepower and being a little bit underpowered to something that should really move and that uh, I think I'm really going to enjoy. So I hope you enjoy watching this as much as I enjoy making it, and I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for watching.